Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 106th tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. And we're just going to make a new QWidget project, and we're going to make a GUI application. And let's just put it wherever you put your stuff. And we're going to call this complete. We're going to cover completions. Completions are actually very simple and very, very cool. And I'm starting to sound like a Nokia salesperson the more I do these videos, but it's all good. So we've got our simple project here. We're just going to open it up. Mm, tick tock, tick tock. There we go. And we're going to throw some stuff on here real quick. Throw a line at it, one, line at it, two. Throw some labels on here. All right, and then we're going to just go like this, like this. There, so we've got our nice, neat form. And we'll say names. And we'll say files. So what we're going to do here in a nutshell is when we run this thing, we're going to type in this box and we're going to have automatic completion for names. And if we type in this box, we'll have automatic completion for the file system. So let's just go ahead and give this a good whirl here. Let it build and run. And when you see right now, nothing happens. So let's make the magic happen, as one of my coworkers says open dialog.h and if it's been a while since you've done a uh, widget or form based application don't worry we're going to explain all this stuff so first thing we need to do is our includes so we need to go we'll add Q completer and let's also add the Q dir model and my daughter always giggles whenever I say dir model because she thinks of like a supermodel saying dir. Anyways, stupid uh, teenage humor. So now we're going to make two of these. One for a string list and one for a model. And if you don't know what I mean by model, go out to my YouTube videos and look up um, how to work with models within Qt. They're very simple, very easy to understand. So we got our string completer and Q complete. And we're going to make a pointer to our model completer. Now I should note that um, both of these are just Q completer objects. Or I should say pointers to Q completer objects. But you can handle them differently. You can say give it a string, or I should say a string list, or give it a model. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. Go ahead and open up dialog.cpp. And this is where we're going to actually set this up. So we'll say use the string list. Q string list. Wow, I cannot spell today. So we got our completion list. Now we want to add a few items into this list here. So we're going to say, uh, let me just grab some names here. My name, Brian, and boy, where's what are some names? Bart, just making names up here. And we will say Brad. And if you want, if you've kind of noticed, I'm starting all these with the letter B. We'll say Beth. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm doing a very simple example of how to use a string list. So when I start typing the letter B, it's going to pop up on a list. You notice how two of these start with BR, Brian and Brad. So when I type BR, the list will narrow down to just Brian and just Brad. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second here. So string completer equal new, eh, Q completer. Um, I posted a video on YouTube where I'm kind of frazzled at the moment because uh, I found out my job is being 
revoked or taken away and I'm not getting fired and my job's being transitioned. So I have to start job hunting if I don't get transitioned with everybody else. So I'm kind of kind of not happy at the moment, but one day at a time. Anyways, we're going to make a new queue completer object and we're going to hand it a reference to the completion list or the string list and then give it this or this object. Now we want to do a little bit of extra magic here. So we'll say string completer and we want to set the case sensitivity whether it's upper or lower and we're just going to say cute and we're just going to say case insensitive because we don't really care and then now we need to bind that or set the completer so we'll say UI line at it because that's our first one and we're going to set completer save your work run it if you typed everything all shall be well now when you start typing we'll just type letter X notice nothing happens type the letter B whoa we suddenly have a list BR and it narrows it down. Now you can navigate through this list using the up and down arrows. And if you like what you see, you can just press tab. So let's try that again. If you don't like what you see, you just keep typing and it'll change it. Pretty neat, huh? Now we're going to make this bad boy work. This is going to be a model. And this is we're just going to use the file system because it's a very simple way of populating a model use a model if you have gobs and gobs of data sometimes models are actually a lot easier than string lists I mean they're kind of complex once you start working with them but once you get the hang of them it's much much easier so we're gonna make our our completer And we want to do set model. Sorry, got kind of distracted there. And we're just going to make a new QDIR. Oops, sorry, QDIR model. Dir. Give it our model completer. I swear, these cats, I am invisible. I know you guys gripe about me complaining about these cats. I'm just, every time I start working on something they're just all over me and then it's pretty much the same thing we're just gonna set the completer and we're gonna say model completer that's all there is to it so let's review real quick before we run this the first one we're creating a string list and populating it then we create our queue completer set the case sensitivity to you know we don't care case insensitive and then we're just setting the completer on the line edit same thing when we want to use model we make our new queue completer at this time we're saying a new QDIR model so we're letting Qt actually generate the model for us using the file system and then handing it off into the completer and then binding that into the whoops the line edit right here using the set completer so knock on wood let's run this that still works and I'm on a Linux system if you're in Windows you type something like that but because we're on Linux ta-da and you can do whatever you want. So if we say like C boot slash and then it you know goes right in here. Pretty neat, huh? I bet you guys could probably think of a thousand and one uses for this. Anyways, this is Brian. I'm um, gonna keep this one rather short. I have some engagements for the evening. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and entertaining and thank you for watching.